Hi, my name is Tamar Meisels, and in this video, we will share some life-changing Jewish coaching ideas. I myself am not a coach. I just enjoy reading about coaching and sharing ideas. When someone says Jewish coaching, this can of course mean coaching that comes from a lot of ideas and concepts from Jewish sources. But I think the main difference when I say Jewish coaching versus regular coaching is that God in Jewish coaching is in the equation. Coaching tries to help support people go through changes, personal changes, professional changes. And I had a friend who went to a coaching course and she said that the focus was very much on me, 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 I, 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 I want to reach my potential. And also in Jewish coaching, of course, the focus is on the individual improving himself but there is something greater than me outside of me and this seems like a small difference but i think that it makes a huge mindset shift the first core idea is that we have intrinsic self-worth god gave us a divine soul a part of us is divine no matter what we did or what was done to us or who loves us this soul and this divine part of us remains intact. So even if I do make a mistake, I realize that this is not part of my core being, who I really am. This doesn't mean that I don't take responsibility for what I did, fix what I did, but I don't get flustered. It's not really who I am. And also this world was designed for errors. If you do, you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna error. And that is exactly how the world was planned, that we make mistakes, we fix our errors, we uplift ourselves from the wrongdoing that we do. And not to get flustered because that is part of the way the world was designed. The second one is I am here on a mission. I was sent here from God on a mission to to do to work i have a unique role in this world out of all the population in the world no two people are the same each person is different each person is unique and has their own role and the mission means you know working acting it's not about being static i heard once someone describe it as like going to the gym you want to work off a of sweat. You want to work. It's about working on our personalities, improving ourselves, helping others, doing, doing, doing. Adversity and challenges can really help us improve ourselves maybe faster, but we pray not to have tough challenges. You know, if, we're, if, we, if we use the gym parable, we're, we want to you know, work off a of sweat and work, but we want it to be an easy workout, a fun workout. So we prefer to have easier exercise and not to push us to the extreme. The next one is I have exactly what I need to execute my role. So not only did he send me here, but he sent me to a specific time and place, gave me my personality, gave me all the things that I need to execute my mission. Not only did he plan my journey and send me to this specific circumstances, but also as my life unfolds, he's leading me to exactly meet who I need to meet, get what I need to get in order to do and execute my mission. Every encounter that I have, every challenge that I have is designed for me. The next one is wherever you go, there you are. So I have what I need for my role and he led me here, but it still sounds a little bit scary. Like what? I have a role. What is my role? So basically every person you meet, every encounter, every situation, that is part of your role. That's part of your mission. You can do good in every single situation in life. So that's part of your mission. The mission is dynamic. The mission changes. You change where you are. Basically, wherever you are right now, that's where you're supposed to be. And when it comes to, you know, your mission in terms of your job. So I know some people that are literally depressed because they think that they could be doing more somewhere else or something about their job just isn't fitting for them. And I completely understand that. You want to be doing more. But the first step of doing that is first accepting where you are right now. Up to this point, you were led to be in that exact situation for as long as you were, 
by God and you had a role and a mission to do there. Once you accept that you're in the place that you are, then you can look and think, okay, what do I need to change to move to my next place? Why do I feel this way? Why do I feel like I could be contributing and doing more in the next place? And then you move to the next place, but you do it in a happy way. So basically, once you become happy and accepting of your situation, that leads you to your next place naturally. So basically, in order to move to your next place, you need to be in a good place, in a place of happiness and acceptance, and then your next place will appear. You don't need a new situation in order to be happy. You need to be happy in order to arrive to your next situation. Listening to God. Because nothing in this world is a coincidence and everything is planned for me, He speaks to us through what happens to us. I need to listen to why things are happening to me because every circumstance, every situation, missing a bus, meeting that specific person, everything is designed and planned. And of course, also your hardships and challenges are designed for you. And you need to ask yourself, why was this challenge sent to me? I have a single friend that said to me, Tamar, why is this happening to me? What is God trying to tell me? What does he want me to do? And I can't be there and answer your question. You have to try to figure out for yourself why this is your challenge. I, as a friend, am just there to support you and be there for you. You can try to understand what God wants from you, what he wants you to work at, what he wants you to change possibly. Sometimes it could take many years to understand what happened. You know, looking back, we can understand why things happened to us. Or sometimes we may never understand, right? Because we're not God. We don't know everything about God's plan. But trying to understand and listening to the cues is part of our existence. The last one is trust God. In Judaism, we have the concept of hishtadlus and bitachon. Hishtadlus means putting in an effort that is required to make some result happen. And bitachon means faith in God. Now, there's some sort of balance here between the two. And some people, you know, lean more towards action that is required of them. And some people have more faith in God, but a certain balance is required here. Basically, what we need to do is to do the steps that are required in this world. And then we back off and we let God call the shots. It's like getting on a bus. We pay for the bus, but then we sit on the bus and relax and we know that the driver knows the way and we will get to our destination. The results, the exact results are not in our hand. You do what you can. You do your hishtadlus. You make your effort. This effort could be external effort, you know, calling a doctor, doing what you have to, taking the steps. It could be also internal work, right? It could be praying, or it could be working on your personality, going to therapy. One very strong example of this is in our decision-making process. When we have to make a decision, we really think it through, we talk to people, we try to make a decision, but once we made that decision, we take a step back and we are certain that the decision we made was exactly what God and Hashem had planned for us. Hope you enjoyed this video about Jewish coaching concepts. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Shalom and hope to see you in my next video.